great. I'm back with another Destiny 2 video and today I want to talk about uh, the new Expunge mission and how those are developing. I could talk about these story developments, but I just wrote a huge article about that. Um, this is one of the better storytelling weeks I think I've ever seen from the game, uh, including a really powerful new cutscene uh, that comes as you complete the weekly Splicer quest and just there's so many different pieces of voice work and so many kind of story developments and things to notice that uh, it is a huge week for storytelling, um, albeit not as huge for actual in-game stuff. Um, long and short of it, I highly recommend doing the main quest for the week, which is just uh, running an override mission and then doing the new expunge mission. Uh, I wanted to talk about that briefly because it is a significant departure from uh, the last one, which was the Labyrinth, which was this kind of timed maze. Well, it was timed because you need an achievement, but um, this one is called Expunge Sticks and like the River Sticks. Um, I don't know if there's anything really river related about it, uh, but <laughs> um, we know that the the uh, Vex love their mythology uh, terms, so, or we love giving them the mythology terms. I don't know how that works really. Um, but obviously, uh, this is not a really a race anymore. The beginning section opens the exact same way. I'm not really sure why we have this like little intro hallway thing to do. Like, I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is, other than kind of uh, extending the timer on these missions by a minute or two. But whatever. Um, but it, it's pretty short. It's only like 30 seconds a minute or something. And then you get into a section that is actually completely different. And I will be um, putting my my gameplay up here. This is my first run ever, so please excuse my uh, <laughs> kind of fumbling around trying to figure out what to do because I didn't really know what this was going for at first. And also excuse me accidentally continually shooting rockets uh, inside of the Vex force field traps that should have killed me, but thanks to lasting impact, I was able to escape. You'll see some of those as uh, time goes on. All you need for this is an anti-barrier weapon. I just grabbed this random uh, scout here because I didn't really feel like grabbing a Chroma Rush from anywhere. And um, it's it's combat focused, but it's it's still kind of a jumping puzzle where the um, the main idea is that you will go through essentially what are three main hallways um, and you will pick up an orb, what else? And then you will have to find a way to bring an orb back to uh, dunk it to uh, do that three times and unlock a final giant Cyclops boss that uh, is not that hard because it doesn't move around. But... <laughs> Um, the, the catch here is that these sections are pretty tricky, they're full of, of lots of enemies, uh, including a couple barrier hobgoblins you have to kill, and then some of them have like a little mini boss harpy you have to kill to unlock uh, the orb carrying area. And then you have to actually pick up um, kind of these data bits as you run back in order so your timer doesn't run out. Um, these will kind of reset your timer, it's only a 10 second timer to start with, and these will reset your timer. Uh, this gets kind of hard when you don't immediately know where all of those are, so you can kind of be scrambling around trying to find one and your thing runs out. Uh, it's also really bad for when you get trapped inside one of the uh, containment things that they shoot at you. Uh, it's, it's essentially like detain um, from, from the raid. Uh, it won't kill you, but it will make you lose your timer. Um, in the end, it's not that hard because it gives you kind of a lot of leeway in terms of if you get like a certain distance back to where you're supposed to dunk, it, there's kind of like checkpoints, so it will uh, spawn a um, spawn an orb like a little further up, so you don't have to like redo the entire run or anything. Uh, it does help that there are if you have the last two upgrades on the left side of the splicer gauntlet, the additional jump cannons and additional platforms will help you do this easier. Maybe not like that much easier, but it should shave some time off your run here, and uh, ultimately. You will uh, end up dunking three of these and unlocking the boss. Final boss encounter, which I'll get to later in this video, is uh, a giant cyclops which is planted in the middle of the room. And that itself is not hard, but it has one immunity phase where you will have to dunk another ball uh, to unlock uh, it from being immune. And then there are laser fences everywhere. Uh, interestingly, I think the upgrades that seem pointless before, like the lasers do less damage to you upgrades and things like that, uh, I think those are actually useful now. I think those apply here because I kept running into lasers and not instantly dying. Uh, so if you haven't upgraded those, those may not be the worst thing to upgrade now. Uh, we didn't really see those, I don't think, in the last uh, instance of this. But now they are, they do exist in this one. So if you uh, don't want to deal with spinny lasers, I, you know, it might apply to the red lasers too. Um, there's kind of multiple types of lasers here now. Uh, laser fences and things like that. Um, that will probably help you. 
and ultimately so what I what's kind of weird is like we don't fully understand what what the process of expunge is and it they didn't really explain it very well they sort of talked about it in the TWAB last week where it appears that like what's happening is that there are going to be seven of these total there's an achievement for completing seven and I think there are two sets of three with different versions and then a seventh and final one. So I think these are like the normal versions we're running now. And then there is some sort of like corrupted version that we are supposed to run uh, once we get through the normal versions of these, which I assume is going to be three weeks worth. It could be four, but I think it's going to be three weeks. And I assume I assume those are going to be harder. And because those are that's when this turns into an actual pinnacle mission, which will give you an actual pinnacle drop. And if we're comparing that to our other pinnacle missions like Presage and Harbinger, uh, well, you can solo those. Obviously, those are things that are better off uh, with a team. So this, it may be time to start running uh, expunge missions as a team once those appear in, in two weeks or one week or whatever it's going to be, uh, in, at least two weeks. Uh, and I, I would imagine that it's going to get a lot harder, maybe in terms of power level. Maybe there will be more champions, more modifiers, things like that. Because, I mean, it's, it's 1290 power right now with, like, one type of champion in it. So it, it's going to be harder. Um I don't know if the challenges themselves are going to be harder, uh, like more tricky or you know harder to pull off or something. Like maybe there are no checkpoints for the orbs anymore <laughs> once you kind of uh, go a little deeper into the corrupted version or something like that. Um, and then keep in mind that these are going to be around pretty much for the indefinite future, uh, at least until the Witch Queen, because all seasonal content lasts forever now. And even if no one is really running it, uh, <laughs> like people, most people are not still doing battlegrounds and hunts and things unless they are like way behind. Um, you at least have the option to do that. Uh, and those, I mean, this if this is a pinnacle mission now, it could be a pinnacle mission next season for all we know. Uh, right now they are giving you um, high stat pieces of armor. High stat is debatable. Like, it can be really high stat. My buddy got a perfect 30 recov, 67 total base, I think pair of arms last week. Uh, I just, this week I got like a 61 something that with stats that were like all over the place. So I think you can still get like high 50s and stuff, but I think this is supposed to kind of be like replacing the guaranteed set of high stat armor you got in the uh, season pass. I don't know if it really works. Like it's, it's just like a one-time thing and like it may not have the distribution you want. So I don't think it's quite... Uh, the same there. Uh, they did say that going forward after this, this will be a place where you can get um, weapons that have two perks on the end. So that will be a new way to uh, farm things like uh, there's right now. There's no way even in focusing to get two perks on a weapon. Uh, so unless they add that, this will be a way to do that. I think by the time that rolls around, it might have all the weapons I want in the first place. But you know, we'll see if that's something that you can do on repeat or not. I'm not sure if it'll just be like a once a week thing or something you can actually farm. Uh, it would be kind of cool if it was something you'd farm. Uh, I'd, I'd say one of those runs for, especially on a harder version of this, for a weapon with two perks seems justified, and I don't know why that would need to be limited to one a week, but, you know, I'm not Bungie, and I don't make those types of decisions, so who knows. Uh, so we should have one more new one next week, at the very least. I, do, I don't know if this is culminating in some sort of big seventh one that is does not have a normal version, and it's like only corrupted, and it's like a big boss battle. Uh, the implication could be that the, the seventh version of this might be some sort of boss battle against uh, Cur uh, Curia, Curia, I never remember, uh, which we have seen teased very briefly, very, very briefly in the opening mission, and we think that she is uh, behind this. Um, I will dip into the story stuff a little bit this week. So if Curia is behind this, Curia like, essentially works for Sabathun. Um, she's Sabathun's taken mind and has blanketed the city in darkness. Um, and now we learned this week that the city has started to sing uh, a song that's like something about banding together and walking into the sun, but the tone at which it's sung is Sabathun's uh, song, the uh, the tone that we hear people, you know, whistling and, and that comes up in all the time uh, is a sign of, of possibly being corrupted. We've seen many characters um, get kind of earwormed by this song. Uh, I think Shax has, uh, I think Crow has. I don't think this means like they're guaranteed to be like controlled by Sabathun or like they're fully corrupted. I just think it means Sabathun's influence is definitely spreading. Uh, it could be spreading through the, the endless night, but I think it, I think the implication is also that it's spreading through um, the sort of hatred that is is coursing through uh, the last city as a result of this conflict over the fallen. 
and whether the Fallen should be allowed to stay, even though this group of Fallen in particular has not done anything to hurt humanity and wants to help us. That is the big focus of the story stuff this week, and I will not go into any more of that now. Uh, just read my article about it, but better yet, just play it yourself. This is definitely a week worth playing. Just trust me, it is. There's a really great cutscene, really great dialogue, stuff like that. Uh, the mission itself, you should be able to solo it. It may be a little harder than um, the last one, but I think I did it in like 11 minutes or something. I, you'll see from this run here that I'm showing you now, but uh, it is not like the hardest thing in the world. Um, even if you're just sort of trial and erroring it, this may not be true. Uh, once they switch over to uh, the corrupt version, and if there are darkness zones and more modifiers and stuff, so we may be running these as a fire team soon. So uh, get in your solo clears while you can. Um, other than that, this week I think I'm just going to be running some Nightfalls, which I believe have double rewards, and it should be the Plug 1 Fusion Rifle, which is the only thing I have. I got surprisingly good rolls in, like, even with how crappy the drops were for Hung Jury and, uh, whatever the Sniper is, Uzume, whatever it's called. Um, I know they're not adept, but, I, you know, I can only farm Grandmasters to some degree before I get exhausted by them, so I'm happy to have normal good versions of those weapons, even if they're not adept. Uh, but I've I've heard uh, True Vanguard keeps going on about this new new fusion rifle perk that is like really good, and I do love my fusion rifles, so I'm gonna see if I can land one of those, and um, that will be my main goal for this week. In addition to trying to get some more raids together, um, since I did two last week, which is two more than I usually do, so uh, I'm really enjoying Vault of Glass. It's it's a lot of fun. Still don't have a Fate Bringer, <laughs> so I'm really looking for that. That's my main goal. I don't really care about Mythic Glass. I mean, I assume it'll get buffed at some point because it's so bad, but. Who knows when that'll be. So uh, that's all I got for now. Um, have fun running Expunge, and we will figure out what the next one is. I may talk about the story stuff more in depth tomorrow, um, but it really resonated with me. So, all right. Um, I will see you guys later. And Evie, you're going to make your cameo? Are you still snoozing? Hello. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's all she's got today. She's tired. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.